Hi guys and welcome. Hope you're all well. In this video I shall be replacing the center fascia on a 2012 Freelander 2. The reason being that many years ago when I first got the Land Rover I fitted an original Nexus 7 by Google into the center and in order to get it to fit I had to cut away some of the aperture and in doing so I managed to damage it and now it's too old it just doesn't boot up and um, it's just no good it's, 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 it's well past its sell by date so I'm going to return it back to its original factory state which involves replacing this part here this is what I'll be replacing it with I got this from a breakers yard from eBay when you're purchasing one or looking at them make sure you get the one that fits your style of vehicle I have an air conditioning button and an air cabin recycling button some models don't have this so when you purchase one make sure you have the, the cutouts that you require these buttons are different from mine I have an eco on mine but don't worry these don't matter on the reverse of these there is two Torx 20 which I shall show you and they just get unscrewed out and replaced with the one that came with it yep in order to replace this the first thing we need to do is remove the center speaker cover this is a pin at the what we'll call the front end or the back end as you look at it and once that's taken off there is two slots where it fits into the fascia and you just lift it away that reveals two bolts which are just either side here and let's you unscrew that and under this there is two bolts and once those two are off the whole fascia just pulls towards you what I will say is be careful removing this I'll show you on this one to remove the plastic cover you pull from the back and then slide it up and away from you and it will come out this is a little v-shaped feet feet holes i was telling you about and on the bottom there is the the feet that slide into it and someone has already pulled this from the bottom causing this one to be damaged the back top ones are not shaped really so they will just push home although that is a sort of v-shaped one i would call it they just push into place on there and that gives you access to these holes which hold the bolts replacing it when you're finished is just placing the feet into the the main hole all along and then sliding it down and forward and then that's it so guys in order to keep the video as short as possible I've already loosened off the back or the front depending on how you look at it of the the grill and when you lift it up the little feet are shown and you just take it away there is in fact three holes each side and the front at the windscreen and that corresponds with three of these and these are just push to close so they will just snap shut when you push it back out back home and that was using just a piece of trim tool just to lift it off I have already taken off one of the torques so it's a, 20, a T20 we'll take these off there's one in there these ones here correct me if I'm wrong but if you have a sat nav um, these two bolt onto the sat nav to hold that together and this is where the screws are to remove the dash I've already taken one off so once you take these off um, the whole thing again is held if I show you on the replacement part it's the same idea down, down the sides it's the little push clips to, to close them 
so it's a matter of just not being afraid and just pulling it towards you and the whole thing should come away don't be shy just pull it out the radio stays in place these will come with it but they will be unscrewed with a, again a Torx T20 as I said and it will come out at the bottom as well at this point take it easy because you do have to dismantle the the clip or just unclip the clip that holds these two that's the clip there and if I show you on the replacement one how to get that off it'll be probably easier This comes pre-cut, that's fine. And it's just a push in on this part and lift off. That's it. And that's the fun and games in at the back with the Nexus 7. Absolutely butchered to make it work. So I'm going to disconnect all of that. Um, oh God, it's already starting to disconnect. There's the power cable and audio cable. Um, audio cable is run under, through and up, so I can still use the auxiliary port. And as I said, the power came from the ignition on 12 volt socket. I'm going to fit the cubby box back in here and I may put a mount in for my phone. So I will change that, that change this lead over because this is USB micro and modern phones now are using either lightning or USB-C in order to run a power cable guys we're going to have to remove this or loosen off and move it out of the way and run the cable from ignition on along under through the back and then up to the cubby box to remove this is the same as the front the speaker cover it's three clips and just put a piece of multi trim tool and just pop it up one at the front and there's one either side be mindful if you have the terrain response because you will have to unclip this power cable it is just a little pinch clip and then pull down and that disconnects from the underside and allows this to spin out of the way we'll also have to take off, I've already done so I get, it's Torx T20s, don't worry about it, it's the same size from the four sides of the radio pull the radio forward and then we can feed the wire and move the new one out of the way this wire then goes up the trim up through the back through the back here and out the front new wire now feeds up the trim into this uh, transmission transmission tunnel you can just make that out and up through the back and then eventually through the top now we put it all back together again before the front face goes back on this is the one off the car this will be coming out and being replaced in here, Torx G20, not too long. I'm now going to fit the cubby box. At the start of the video, these were the ones which were holding the fascia to the sort of front of the vehicle, and these were the ones that were blank. These two on the front actual cubby box will bolt onto them and will hold them in place. When you're putting the cubby box back in, they go in the aperture and those two little lugs you see on each end fit through the holes and then it just rocks back in itself. And you can see these two get screwed to hold that in place and then this holds it to the dashboard. There you have it guys, new fascia 
put back on, all connected up. And I have audio and power. Power coming from the ignition on. I may hardwire it. We'll see. Hope you enjoyed that. Tell me what you think.